Okay, this is video two for the um, for chapter 25 managerial accounting. This is just going to be the problem, the example problems that I said I would go over. Um, so the first one is brief exercise 25-1 on page 1288. Um, brief exercise 12 or 25-1 says determine the average rate of return for a project that is estimated to yield a total income of $170,000. Put that in here for over five years and has a cost of $320,000 and has a residual value of $20,000. So first thing I wanna find is my average income. And just like any other average, that would be the total income divided by the number of years. So my average income is $34,000. Next, <clears throat> I wanna find my average investments. Okay, and as we have have here, average investment is my initial cost plus residual value divided by two. So initial cost, parentheses, initial cost plus residual value, all of that divided by two. So $170,000 is the average. So yeah, it's the average investment. Um, so then I can find my average rate of return. I can do that simply by taking my average annual income divided by my average investment. And this is a percentage number. So it's a 20% average rate of return. And that's all for 25-1. Um, 25 basic exercise 25-2 is a payback cash payback period. Um, so it says the project has been has estimated annual cash flows of $36,500 and an estimated cost of $222,650. So I've got those two amounts here. The cash payback period, I simply take the initial cost divided by the annual uh, cash flows. So payback period. Take the initial cost divided by the annual cash flows for an answer of 6.1. So it'll take 6.1 years. Um, so, you know, a tenth of a year is technically like 36 and a half days or 36 days. Um, but 6.1 years is a payback period for this. So that's well and good when everything's equal, and that's a little bit easier to figure out. Uh, but what happens if I'm comparing two projects um, and one has equal cash flows and one does not? So we look at that on exercise 25-5. So exercise, not brief exercise. This is on page 1289. Okay, so all I've done here is I have, I have, I'll read the problem to you, but I put all the information in. This is a good one for you to try on your own before uh, watching my problem, uh, if you're wanting to try that. So it says, uh, Chinook Incorporated is evaluating two capital investment proposals for a retail outlet. Each requires an investment of 900,000. So both location one and location two require $900,000 worth of investment. And each have an eight year life and have an expected total cash flows of a million dollars. So this is a good example of one that on the surface looks like they're pretty much exactly the same. Because if I've got two projects that cost me the same amount, they're gonna return me over all the same amount, aren't they the same? Well, the answer is no, they're not because the frequency and um, timing of the cash flows could differ substantially. Um, and also, as I said, with the payback period, one of the things we're measuring is our risk. And the quicker the payback period, generally, the less, the less risk that we have. So, um, so we get our total cash flows for both of them to be a million. Um, and then it goes on to say location one provides equal amounts of cash flows, um, equal annual net cash flows of $200,000. And location two is expected to have unequal cash flows. So, cash flows per year at location one is 200,000. Um, so, I really actually don't need to fill this out. I can figure out location one payback pretty easily by using the same formula I used up here. Copy it down here so you can see it. Cash payback period um, is initial cost divided by annual cash flows. So initial cost 
divided by annual cash flows of $200,000. So 4.5 years is when location one paid back. Now, location two is a little bit more complicated because I have differing cash flows every single year. So the way that I prefer to do this, and this isn't exactly the way the book shows it, but it's kind of my own method, is I like to figure out when it pays back, and then I go from there and figure out the percentage of the year required for that last year, if it doesn't pay off equally. So I have $900,000 in total that I'm looking to get paid back, right? So if I put 900,000, whoops, not percentage, decimal. $900,000. So in year one, if I take 900,000 minus 300,000, I have 600,000. This is my balance remaining to pay back. Okay. And if I do the same thing, I take the 600,000 minus the 220,000, still not pay back all the way. Once this reaches zero, or if it's uneven, it might reach beyond zero. That's the year that it's going to pay back. So again, 380 is now my balance remaining. 380 minus 180 is 200,000, still not paid back. 200,000 minus 150,000, 50,000 still not paid back. 50,000 minus 50,000. And since it equals exactly zero, the answer to location two's payback is five years even. Okay, 4.5 years was one, and five years even was number two. Um, so if we're only looking at payback period to see which is a better investment, the answer is location one because it pays back quicker. Now I want to show you something else because I think that it's worth, worth looking at. What happens, this, they, the book made this so this was nice and even, that's great, and that's, that makes it easier obviously. But what happens if it's not? So I'm just gonna make these numbers up, kind of like I do in class sometimes. So let's say this is 350,000, let me delete this here. Let's say this is 210,000. Say this is 75,000. Say this is 125,000. Say this is 65,000. This is 60,000. 10,000. So 100,000 is fine. Let's see here. Okay, this is good. So I can use my same method with one exception, I gotta figure out how far into that last year it goes. So I can still do what I did before, take the balance I'm looking to pay back, my payback amount, subtract how much is paid back in the current year, and just continue to do that. Now because of how I wrote this, I can go like this, luckily. But do realize all I'm doing is exactly what I said. Take the prior balance, subtract the current year's amount. Take the prior balance, subtract the current year's amount. Take the prior balance, subtract the current year's amount. Prior balance, current year's amount. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. Now here it comes out negative, okay? So what that means is that I pay it back in the sixth year, but I pay it back and then some, right? I paid more than $900,000 back after the end of year six. What that means is that I need a full five years, but I don't actually need all of year six. So how do I figure out the fraction amount in the last, well, the last year? Well, now while it's not necessarily always the case, the assumption that we make here is that the cash flows throughout the year are relatively equal or even, okay? So what that would mean that, you know, I make $100,000 a year, that means I'm equally bringing in $2,000 a week, for example, since there's 52 weeks a year, I know there's a little difference there, but close enough, right? $2,000 a week. So I wanna know what portion of year six I need. So I know that whatever I get, I'm gonna need five years plus whatever I get of a portion of the year of year six. Well, I have 80,000 remaining and it's 100,000, so to figure out that fraction, all I need to do is take 80,000 divided by 100,000, which will be 0.8, so my payback period for this one with these unequal cash flows and not an equal cash flow of the payback period is 5.8 years. It can't be six because I don't need all of six. Because if I continue this down, remember it gets to be negative, which means I've gone beyond it. So it pays off in year six, but it does not go fully into year six. So the payback period for this, and like I said, I just made these numbers up, um, but that would be 5.8 years would be the payback period with uneven, um, cash flows in a, in a, in a mid-year or, or within the year payback. And that should be it for 25 Lecture 2.